Hello there. It's my joy to welcome you today. This is day number 130. Today we read Judges 12 and 13, Psalm 84, and Galatians 6, finishing that epistle. God has wonderful treasures for us in his word today. Let's open to Judges 12. Yesterday, after hearing of three minor judges, we heard of Jephthah. Jephthah was a man of very poor credentials, but he turned out to be a surprisingly good leader. His story shows clearly why it is better not to make rash vows to the Lord. Indeed, the New Testament tells us not to make vows at all. Judges 12 The men of Ephraim prepared for battle. They crossed the Jordan River to Zaphon and said to Jephthah, Why did you cross the border to fight the Ammonites without calling us to go with you? We'll burn the house down over your head. But Jephthah told them, My people and I had a serious quarrel with the Ammonites. I did call you, but you would not rescue me from them. When I saw that you were not going to, I risked my life and crossed the border to fight them, and the Lord gave me victory over them. So why are you coming up to fight me now? Then Jephthah brought all the men of Gilead together, fought the men of Ephraim, and defeated them. The Ephraimites had said, You Gileadites in Ephraim and Manasseh, you are deserters from Ephraim. In order to keep the Ephraimites from escaping, the Gileadites captured the places where the Jordan could be crossed. When any Ephraimite who was trying to escape would ask permission to cross, the men of Gilead would ask, Are you an Ephraimite? If he said no, they would tell him to say Shiboleth. But he would say Siboleth, because he could not pronounce it correctly. Then they would grab him and kill him there at one of the Jordan River crossings. At that time, 42,000 of the Ephraimites were killed. Jephthah led Israel for six years. Then he died and was buried in his hometown in Gilead. After Jephthah, Ibzan from Bethlehem led Israel. He had thirty sons and thirty daughters. He gave his daughters in marriage outside the clan and brought thirty young women from outside the clan for his sons to marry. Ibzan led Israel for seven years. Then he died and was buried at Bethlehem. After Ibzan, Elon from Zebulun led Israel for ten years. Then he died and was buried at Aijalon in the territory of Zebulun. After Elon, Abdon, son of Hillel from Pirathon, led Israel. He had forty sons and thirty grandsons who rode on seventy donkeys. Abdon led Israel for eight years. Then he died and was buried at Pirathon in the territory of Ephraim in the hill country of the Amalekites. Judges 13 The Israelites sinned against the Lord again, and he let the Philistines rule them for forty years. At that time there was a man named Manoah from the town of Zorah. He was a member of the tribe of Dan, His wife had never been able to have children. The Lord's angel appeared to her and said, You have never been able to have children, but you will soon be pregnant and have a son. Be sure not to drink any wine or beer, or eat any forbidden food. And after your son is born, you must never cut his hair, because from the day of his birth he will be dedicated to God as a Nazirite. He will begin the work of rescuing Israel from the Philistines. Then the woman went and told her husband, A man of God has come to me, and he looked as frightening as the angel of God. I didn't ask him where he came from, and he didn't tell me his name. 
but he did tell me that I would become pregnant and have a son. He told me not to drink any wine or beer or eat any forbidden food, because the boy is to be dedicated to God as a Nazirite as long as he lives. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord, Please, Lord, let the man of God that you sent come back to us and tell us what we must do with the boy when he is born. God did what Manoah asked, and his angel came back to the woman while she was sitting in the field. Her husband Manoah was not with her, so she ran at once and told him, Look, the man who came to me the other day has appeared to me again. Manoah got up and followed his wife. He went to the man and asked, Are you the man who talked to my wife? He answered, Yes. Then Manoah said, Now then, when your words come true, what must the boy do? What kind of life must he lead? The Lord's angel answered, Your wife must be sure to do everything that I have told her. She must not eat anything that comes from the grape vine. She must not drink any wine or beer, or eat any forbidden food. She must do everything that I have told her. Not knowing that it was the Lord's angel, Manoah said to him, Please do not go yet. Let us cook a young goat for you. But the angel said, If you do, I will not eat your food, but if you want to prepare it, burn it as an offering to the Lord. Manoah replied, Tell us your name, so that we can honor you when your words come true. The angel asked, Why do you want to know my name? It is a name of wonder. So Manoah took a young goat and some grain, and offered them on a rock to the Lord, and the Lord did an amazing thing. While the flames were going up from the altar, Manoah and his wife saw the Lord's angel go up toward heaven in the flames. Manoah realized then that the man had been the Lord's angel, and he and his wife threw themselves face downward on the ground. They never saw the angel again. Manoah said to his wife, We are sure to die because we have seen God. But his wife answered, If the Lord had wanted to kill us, he would not have accepted our offerings. He would not have shown us all this or told us such things at this time. The woman gave birth to a son and named him Samson. The child grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Lord's power began to strengthen him while he was between Zorah and Eshtaol in the camp of Dan. Let's turn now to Psalm 84. This favorite psalm has inspired many worship songs. Note the theme of joy. The Hebrew title is A Psalm by the Clan of Korah. Psalm 84 How I love your temple, Lord Almighty! How I want to be there! I long to be in your temple, O Lord! With my whole being I sing for joy to you, the living God! Even the sparrows have built a nest, and the swallows have made their own home in the temple. They keep their young near your altars, O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. How happy are those who live in your temple, always singing praise to you! How happy are those whose strength comes from you! who are eager to make the pilgrimage to Mount Zion. As they pass through the dry valley of Baca, it becomes a place of springs. The autumn rain fills it with pools. They grow stronger as they go. They will see you, the God of gods, on Zion. 
O hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen, O God of Jacob. Bless our King, O God, the King you have chosen. One day spent in your temple is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather stand at the gate of the house of my God than live in the homes of the wicked. You, O Lord, are our protector and glorious King, blessing us with kindness and honor. You do not refuse any good thing to us who do what is right. O Lord Almighty, how happy are those who trust in you. Now let's turn to the final chapter of Galatians, chapter 6. Building on the concept of freedom from the requirements of the law in chapter 4, Paul continued on that theme in chapter 5. Of course, there were no chapter boundaries when he wrote his letter. The freedom Paul described is founded on the idea that we are now controlled by the Holy Spirit. A second very important concept is considering ourselves dead to sinful desires and deeds which were enumerated at the end of chapter 5. Now let's read the last five verses of chapter 5 before starting chapter 6. Chapter 5, verses 22 through 26. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as these. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have put to death their human nature with all its passions and desires. The Spirit has given us life. He must also control our lives. We must not be proud or irritate one another or be jealous of one another. Galatians 6 My friends, if someone is caught in any kind of wrongdoing, those of you who are spiritual should set him right, but you must do it in a gentle way. And keep an eye on yourselves so that you will not be tempted too. Help carry one another's burdens, and in this way you will obey the law of Christ. If you think you're something, and you're really nothing, you are only deceiving yourself. You should each judge your own conduct. If it is good, then you can be proud of what you yourself have done, without having to compare it with what someone else has done. For each of you have to carry your own load. If you are being taught the Christian message, you should share all the good things that you have with your teacher. Do not deceive yourselves. No one makes a fool of God. You will reap exactly what you plant. If you plant in the field of your natural desires, from it you will gather the harvest of death. If you plant in the field of the Spirit, from the Spirit you will gather the harvest of eternal life. So let's not become tired of doing good, for if we do not give up, the time will come when we will reap the harvest. So then, as often as we have the chance, we should do good to everyone, and especially to our brothers and sisters who believe the same things we have taught you. See what big letters I make as I write to you now with my own hand. The people who are trying to force you to be circumcised are the ones who want to show off and boast about external matters. They do it, however, only so that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. 
Even those who practice circumcision do not obey the law. They want you to be circumcised only so that they can boast that you have submitted to this physical ceremony. As for me, however, I will boast only about the cross of our Lord Christ Jesus. For by means of his cross, the world is dead to me, and I am dead to the world. It does not matter at all whether or not one is circumcised. What does matter is being a new creature. As for those who follow this rule in their lives, may peace and mercy be with them, with them and with all of God's people. To conclude, let no one give me any more trouble because the scars I have on my body show that I am a slave of Jesus. May the grace of our Lord Christ Jesus be with you all, my friends. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Please apply the truths we have read in this letter to the Galatians to us, to me and my listener, through the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Spirit convince us that He is present and active in our lives. Please lead us away from boasting based on anything that we do. Instead, help us to be like Paul. He only boasted about what Christ had done for him. Help us also to grasp the depth of the union with Christ that Paul speaks of. Enable us to consider ourselves crucified with Christ and dead to this world. We praise you that the Holy Spirit has now resurrected us, and today our desire is to live as your new creatures.